I am Lord we give you praise I am oh I am oh I am Thank you, our Father, for this morning. Breathe upon us your word. Teach us your way, Rabuni. Help us to understand your truth. Thank you, our Maker. We will be blessed that we came. May your word open up to us. In Jesus' name I pray. Sit down. Thank you. Thank you. I am your own till the day you will come. That your desire, I am your own. I am your own till the day you will come. Jesus, I am your own. Hallelujah. You know, your father is always emotional when he wants to see his children depart. So I'm a bit emotional today. It's always like that. Well, you know, the joy of any father is to lose the ability to keep people. You know, I've been, I've been laughed at and I'm mocked severally, ministry-wise. I remember a, a pastor told me, he said, he said, you ain't doing the right thing. And I asked him why. He said, how will you raise people for five years? Invest in them and you can't keep them. You know, some churches, they will keep some heavyweight and you become us and certain leaders in the church. But well, it's not a problem. The grace is sufficient enough to keep raising men. Is that okay? And then the, the vision and the mission of the ministry is not to keep them. It's to raise them that they go off and influence the systems of the world the systems of this world become the system of our God and of his Christ so I celebrate each and every one of you please I beg you the message you heard last week Sunday and everything you will hear today it will sustain you for the next 30 years of your life hold it one thing the devil doesn't like see I can decide to rub in the anointing now and begin to pray for people here and you fall down the devil doesn't give a damn about that. But one thing he fights is when information wants to come off. Because it is truth that men know that sets them free. A father of mine in Zimbabwe was just telling me a story. He said one time a pastor came to him and was one of his sons in the ministry and was celebrating the workings of God in his church. And um, he told this father of mine, he said, um, Papa, my ministry is doing so great but there's something, the anointing is so much that by the time I just make an attempt to want to preach the power of God begins to move everywhere, demons are shouting and I'm using almost the whole ass delivering people, setting them free and it's such a wonderful encounter you know fatherhood is not based on age but based on two things, number one, the battles you fought and won and the experiences you have gathered in life. That's what makes a man a spiritual father. No soldier who has not gone to battle should be trusted with a battalion. In fact, the battalions will not even follow him because he doesn't know what battle looks like. Right? But when you have gone to battle and survived, then you have experiences to tell, stories to share. Are we following? So spiritual fatherhood are raised through of battles fought and won and through experiences of life what you have gathered not by knowledge of scriptures Any, anybody fact, the young generation are even blowing lights than our fathers is that not so they can turn scriptures like this but they can't displace the position of fathers and so my father laughed at him and said to him the devil is after your ministry and he was confused the devil is attacking your information ministry 
delivering. He has just taken over your church. In fact, you should ordain him. Because you spend the whole service casting out devils and the people get no information. And you are happy. It's after your information ministry. So that's why we take the pain to do the word so much in this place. Information is powerful. What you know can set you free or what you know can keep you in captivity. So hold the word I shared last week, right? Or paintings you need to take serious to survive the year 2024. Hold it jealously. Guard it jealously. Today I came to pour my heart to you and the burdens of the Lord on my spirit that he has laid for me to share to you. So guard it jealously. Hold that message for life. I said it will sustain you for the next 30 years. Everything I will share will be by the basis of scriptures, by the processes of life, research, learnings, um, instructions from fathers, tutorings, and um, above all, experiences of life. So that where I made mistakes, you will make them. And where I failed, you will not fail there. Is that okay? So please, let's hold that word jealously. Asian war ever true. Second Peter chapter one and verse eight. Asian war ever true. Changing me and changing you. We have come with open eyes. Oh, let the ancient world sing The Bible says, Second Peter 1 and verse 8, For if these things be in you and abound, that is, they continually to increase in you, they make you. These things, we'll go back to those things anyway, but those things have the ability to, number one, what? Make you. That you shall neither be what? Barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So it simply means as Christians, our understanding of Christ should enable us to produce results. Are we following? We should become the envy of our generation. The world should come learn our style. The world should come copy the way we do things. The proof of Christianity should be seen in the results our life produces. Not just in our speaking in tongues. Are we following? No. If our life is not influencing anyone, no one wants to be like us. No one is admiring us. No one is wanting to go after our God. The Bible says, for in that day, seven men will hold a skirt of a Jew, saying, take me to your God. That's the prophecy of the last day. Simply means that in every sphere of this nation, we should see Christians in charge. You go to the banking sector, the academic world, you should see Christians. Why? Because of the functioning of the Holy Ghost upon them. It's an added advantage. We can't do things at the level of those who don't have the Spirit of God. So way, so way, so way, so way. You know why I like to sing this song? Anytime I minister, I sing the song to remind myself that beyond the fact that you see me as human, I am supernatural. I am not an ordinary person. That's why I don't like this song. Let us live a world of ordinary people. You are the one ordinary. I'm not. That's why the Bible says, why do you do things like ordinary men, like carnal men? I'm not ordinary. The life of God is in the inside of me. I carry something I can offer my generation. I can offer my word. The wisdom of God is on my life. The power of the Holy Ghost flows through me. The anointing of God is on me. I do things with top-notch excellence. I carry the aura, the scent of royalty everywhere I go. Because I represent a kingdom. Don't forget, Pastor Tango tells us about that. That you must be conscious of the fact that you represent a kingdom. This is where Christians miss it. You are no longer representing yourself. You have been sentenced to a life to live that life for another. Do we understand that? Everything you do, you must carry the consciousness that you are representing a government, a system. You are an ambassador. You are an envoy to a generation. 
everywhere you step into see this once you carry this consciousness you will find out that the things you are looking for will begin to look for you i have never once struggled to pray for anyone why i told you i don't do it it's not my job i don't perform it i like what bishop david Oeber said during the shiloh program whenever a sense man appears the sender appears whenever a sense man stretch forth his hand the sender that's why the bible calls us what the body of christ is not a building is a human being i'm his eyes to see so i am naturally prophetic i'm his ears to hear as you talk to me he hears your pain i'm a biological speaker there which god can hear the cries of his creation i'm his mouth to speak forth his word to my generation i'm his hands stretched forth to him that's why the bible tells us that we shall lay hands on the sick and they shall engage in a recovery process it simply means they might not be instantly healed but once we can see a sign no matter how little that change is is a recovery we shall lay hands on the sick Christ in me, Colossians 1.27 the hope of glory so what I'm saying in a nutshell is that your life as Christians must produce results. there must be something unique and different about you they shouldn't put you in a company and it goes down they shouldn't give you a department to function in and it goes down are we together everything about your life should show the aura of divinity nothing dies in my hand i don't experience mediocrity why the holy ghost is in the inside of me did you not see the lifestyle of nebuchadnezzar that man was so smart daniel chapter 1 and verse 3 down what the bible say he chose magicians from the chaldeans sorcerers and then he also had to choose certain prophets from the jewish world he wanted to be covered all around are we following pray in the holy ghost one minute praise the lord praise the lord let the earth hear his voice praise the lord praise the lord let the people rejoice who come to the father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory great things he has done 2nd Peter chapter 1 from verse 1 Holy Holy are you Lord God Almighty? What is the land? What is the land? Amen. Second Peter chapter one. Second Peter chapter one from verse one. The Bible says, Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of God, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. So how do grace come on men? Information is dispensed to them. Are we following? The multiplication of grace comes according to your level of knowledge. That's why Philemon is in Philemon now 1 and verse 5, there to 7, he says, and that, um, 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 your grace be multiplied by the acknowledging of every good thing in the inside of you so it simply means how do I manifest there's a way life is in the inside of us it says for this is eternal life that you will know the son listen listen that life is in everyone that is born again right but what brings that life is I call you holy your name is holy you are so holy to me. I call you holy. I call you holy. Your name is holy. Holy you are and holy you be. 
So what I'm looking for actually, the Bible says, and that Christ may be amplified by the acknowledging of every good thing in the inside of you. So it simply means, as I grow in the knowledge of Jesus, the more he's bigger in my inside, the more of him finds the expression. Do we understand that? So growing grace, Second Peter, Second Peter 1, from verse 3. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and what? Godliness. So it didn't, it simply means life is not godliness. And godliness is not life. It's, a, it's an and. Do we understand that? However, in Christ we have been given all things that pertains both to life and to what? Godliness. Through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and what? Virtue. The word virtue there simply means excellence. Compartment and deportment. There's the way you carry yourself like you know you are the child of a real. Compartment and deportment. You don't size yourself by your family background. But because of a royal blood in the inside of you. You don't size yourself by your condition. You don't size yourself by your immediate circumstances. But because you carry in the inside of you a royal DNA. Once you live in that reality, you begin to attract the things royals attract. Men begin to treat you truly like a king. Because your comportment and deportment is a statement to your generation, even without you saying anything. The Bible says in Galatians 5 verse 1, but an heir, as long as he's a child, is not better than what a servant though he be lord of all but he's kept on that governors and tutors till the time appointed as long as he remains a child so it simply means yes mercy gives us maturity gives us yes because you know we've abused this doctrine of mercy everywhere now it's uh, i'm covered by mercy mercy speak for me there are things you won't get by mercy you will get it by growth he gave them gift according to their several ability, maturity. We can't take one scripture and override another. He said, as long as an heir remains a child. So spiritual growth is a necessity. It's a powerful engagement in this great kingdom. You must make up your mind to grow. That's how you can begin to handle things in this kingdom. Act 20, 32. And of the word of God, he said, which is able to build you and then it gives you an inheritance so the word builds you first you gain stature to contain and carry the inheritance that's why you can't come to church and know right it's not possible you don't know what you are doing you think it's a tradition to go to service you just sit and listen to the man of god is your ear a tape recorder you come like you are coming to a spiritual hospital you came to see a doctor who Dagon answers your problem without asking you a question from the sermon and you get your own drugs from it? I've told you if you remove the church from this world, you know that almost everybody is depressed. The reason why you don't know you are depressed is because you come to church every week. No matter how the craziness is one in your head, when you sit down, you say, There is hope for me again. There is hope for me again. I can make it. That's what. See what is happening to the world. People are jumping, taking sniper like as if they buy it cheaply. Drinking sniper on daily basis. Are we together? <laughs> I just want to share something very briefly in addition to what I shared last week. Two things are my main priority today. Number one is to produce result. Let your Christianity produce result. I'll share quickly on that and then I'll go to my main sermon for today. According next verse, next verse. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by thee ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in this world through loss. Listen. If I want to send money to the, um, Pastor Emmanuel now, what I will do, I will make a transfer right and he doesn't get the money physically what he receives is a test message and he starts to jump you know how what Allah does to you how comes the pages of scripture can't do the same do you know what it is to open it and see it and say I have overcome you are supposed to shout the whole of this city down that's how we read 
are we for? He said, by this promise, what we celebrate on this earth, now you are graduating. You read electrical engineering. They didn't buy you multimeter. They didn't buy you voltmeter. They didn't even give you wire. No resistor or capacitor. You read computer engineering. They never gave you a computer. What they gave you is a statement. And you carry it comfortably. To open doors for me. How comes the pages of scriptures? How comes? That's why even the word from your, from God's servant means nothing to you. How comes I stand there and say your ways are open and you forgot what I said? But the school gave you a paper printed in a computer center and wrote on it and you are confident enough that with this in my hand I will knock at certain doors and they will answer. I have what my generation will look for me. You see why we call it Asian world? Ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open eyes. Oh, let the walls impart. See, I believe God's word like a child. There is a difference between childlikeness and childishness. What the Bible rebooks us for is childishness. Paul said, I behave like a talked and understood like a child but he said for this kingdom we must receive it as a child like a child that's childlikeness not childishness yeah you believe every statement of scriptures because that's the way god works with us our faith in him and absolute confidence in him is his greatest delight how come you stand before the red sea and men want to stone you and you run to the god and the god said much for and Moses turned back out of fear. He said, Yeah, oh Israel, today you will see deliverance of God. God said, That's not what I say. You should say, March forward. <laughs> but encourage yourself. Be confident in what I ask you to do. Are we together? You know, I said to a young man some few days ago, I said, The way we've been the Christian faith is the reason that I've made many of us behave like our legs, our spiritual legs are amputated. We have colored certain things. If the Bible says that the step of a good man are ordered by the Lord, why do I need to see a vision to start a church? People just lie here and there. Yes, there are times it comes uniquely. I am privileged. I have that kind of... But who says you must hear something, see an angel? I step in by faith. I just speak in my spirit as time. Are we following? I'm supposed to start this business. You are waiting to hear a voice. Who trained you that way? You are not a robot. Do we understand that? You know, it's called the Kai glory. You just know what to do. Do we understand that? I said number one is that you must learn to produce what? Result. Let your Christianity be result oriented. Don't live a Christianity of mockery. And with the Bible says there are things we will add, right? When we add it, it says we will be fruitful if these things become part of our life. We always produce results. Nothing will fail in our hands. Nothing. We can't go out and struggle if these things abide. And not just abide in us, but they abound. We keep growing and practicing and increasing it on a daily basis. Because have you seen anyone still striving to win medals in Olympic because he has won one, he won't practice again? That's the problem of Christianity. I read a sermon I said I've never preached in my life. I planned for, in fact, while I sat down from my seat to come up, I was praying. I said, Lord, please help me. Give me utterance. On my seat. Not, I can't stand to talk without even preparing a message. But I needed that grace. I prepared my message as if I'm preaching a series, maybe 10 part series. That's how I prepare. Practicing. Practicing till you get better. He said, they will make you. They will make you. Let's continue. And beside this, giving all diligence, that is with the whole of your strength and ability, with all sense of consciousness, 
that's the problem of Christianity is that we take our personal responsibilities and put it on God for instance now it's absolute stupidity to pray to God to make you patient he said be patient you make the decision to be patient Lord help me to love bro in your life you decide to love him why those things are the fruits of, he said the fruit of the spirit is they are in you you make the decision to allow them to flow out of you it's not a prayer on impartation that makes you impatient it was your decision so you have to also decide see God's word is for doing not for quoting tell your neighbor God's word is for doing and not for quoting the bible says in Acts of the things Jesus began to do and to teach to do and to teach not for quoting take responsibilities are we getting blessed already Where would I have been if thou were not be by my side? I will arise to see the dawning of the day. Your tender mercy is always falling from the hand. At times I could not see you, even though you there for me. Oh Lord, you are good. You are good, and your mercy forever endures. The Bible says, and beside giving all diligence unto your faith, the word faith talks about your Christian work, and secondly, your assignment and purpose to your faith add virtue. Virtue yet speaks about what excellence. This is the reason why Christians are not producing results. He didn't say to your faith, add prayers. Add virtue. Color it, beautify your Christianity with a touch of excellence. Are we getting blessed at all? What is excellence? What is virtue? Excellence is learning to do the right thing the first time. One. Excellence is learning to do the right thing the first time. Two. Excellence is producing superior quality of works. Superior quality of works. Three. Excellence is doing common things uncommonly well. Excellence is doing common things uncommonly well. And to your faith what virtue excellence that's the problem one of the places the highest peak of mediocrity is among Christians and Africans we stay only with the faith and do nothing to it and that's why we are not fruitful In fact, the next verse I think verse 10 it says make your calling sure people should not mock you and say this 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 the way they do you should say that your Asian part they shouldn't mock you you can't run a restaurant and every all your plate you are using to serve people is oil the only thing you have in your shop as a tool to advance your business is an anointing oil I prayed on you will chop suffer is that not what we do they carry the olive oil and pull like this every corner of the shop wake up wake up because that's what we be told you are going to see a great person somebody gives you an opportunity you know the class and the caliber of the person you just dress anyhow you like you didn't hear the story of Joseph I talked about last week how that he was coming out of the prison but he refused to smell like the prison stop thinking people will pity you because of the way you dressed pity you because you are drinking Gary you bought roasted corn as a wealthy man so you will see that it's roasted corn you eat that is a myopic like comalic behavior and thinking you are limited in your psychology are we getting blessed he changed his raiment are we getting blessed Proverbs 21 verse 29 Seest thou a man diligent? The amplified said, and skillful 
in his business he will stand before kings he shall not stand I have such a high test for excellence mediocrity irritates me so much about the things that concerns you true wisdom is a house built to understanding it is what established and by knowledge it is filled with all presentries true wisdom not so much how can you be a pastor bible you don't know much but if they ask you to explain now politics you are there is that your calling by the vantage point of the fact that you are a human being you can know some things about some things but when it comes to your assignment know so much about what you do that's what stands you have you produce resolve are we getting blessed already become studious number three out your knowledge what next verse next verse quickly please to your knowledge temperance temperance means self-restraint to hold yourself in to control your mood control your reactions temperance in everything temperance I determine what happens around my life that's temperance I determine how I react to the issue what if people get me angry I ignore them why with humans the rule of life is that I expect anything and learn tolerance if nobody told you I'm telling you now expect anything from the least expected are we following and to temperance add what patience patience and patience what godliness godliness what is godliness godliness is the right living people should be able to see by your action the way you conduct the affairs of your life are we together and to godliness brotherly kindness brotherly kindness the affection we show towards one another be good to people don't change your good heart because bad people change who you give them to give it to be good to people you can't stop a kingdom principle because of one person i keep helping people to your date help them it's their business and finally brotherly um, kindness and brotherly kindness love charity next verse he said if these things be in you and they grow you keep practicing them are we following you force your force yourself that's how i grew in my excellence level i pick something i want to write those that work with me know and i've seen it some of you are here you send the content i reject it you're angry that's your excellence level see listen when you are producing results always know that you are not the one that wants to pay yourself call me nana kane Alright. Number two, let's go to our main sermon. Engage the new stream of income. Open bracket strategic relationships. Engage the new stream of income. There are points in your life you will come to where what you know don't matter, but who you know and who you are connected to. Listen. Are we together? The Bible says we should be fruitful, multiply, subdue the earth, and have dominion never forget this in your entire life that fruitfulness comes through relationship a man has to relate with his wife to produce a fruit called children it is your relationship with the holy ghost that releases the anointing it is your relationship with the word of god that brings knowledge and understanding it is your relationship with people that brings profit are we getting blessed already in everything you do whether in business you need people if you are selling something will you buy yourself humans will buy it if you are into ministry will you preach to empty chairs people will sit down so you must master strategic relationships are we following 
if you don't have strategic relationship in the times we are in now it will be difficult for you to survive do you have somebody you can call at one day and they will render you help one day so if you go to your facebook twelve thousand followers just tell them you need 10k you know you have used less numbers just put there that you need 10k maybe there is a condition and you need 10,000 <laughs> you know you don't have friends <laughs> it's numbers <laughs> do you have people in your circle that when you need a million now five of them can say we raise it now that's how you get this thing though. you need it in the times we are in are we following are we together because you will get to a point in time of your life where you cannot solve all problems you can't I help people in different aspects of their lives. It doesn't mean I'm working in those firms. It doesn't mean that. Sometimes I just call. Please, I want you to do this for me. And that's how. Build strategic relationships. Are we hearing that? As you go out, this is not time to be jumping. I know you have written every kind of color on your shirt. Those are stories. Though. It's just frivolities. You see, even some people that are signed out are actually still in. Yes, now we know they are in. So this sign up. <laughs> Please pray in the Holy Ghost. Just one minute. In Jesus' name, we pray. No matter the levels of your giftings, no matter the levels of your anointing in life, you will need strategic relationships to rise. Are we following? If I had no people standing by me, by the time I had beatings of my life, we will not be able to keep this here. But I had people standing around my life to say, hold your hand. You can't go down. That's my, I'm not paid for ministry a dime. I'm teaching you how I survive. By the vantage where, and some of you are abusing this now. Abusing it now. You are quality by you. Everybody. Listen. Listen. You are respected not just by your knowledge. You are respected not just by your money. You are respected in life by the quality of people you know. He has strategic. In fact, a chapter was dedicated in the New Testament for the people that supported Jesus. He had men like Joseph of Abimata who was able to preserve his body. All your friends are pastors, Abi. Continue. <laughs> are we following? Be careful. Heavyweight men to the extent he had so much finances. Do you know the kind of clothes Jesus put on that the Bible said they had to cast lots? They do cha cha to divide his clothes. If you think it's by the anointing, remember they never believed in him. So who told you they were interested in anointing? He taught his man to. It was the cost of the material. Listen, every man you meet in life is either a key. Or what? A padlock leading you to a door. Some come to your life, they will open doors for you. Some will lock your destiny. Strategic relations. Your problem is that you are hanging around everybody and you are putting everybody in the same category. See, everybody cannot be in the same category on life. It's based on their contribution. Are we following? It's based on their contribution. You can't hold a young man or a young lady in your life the next thing now compared to your parent that raised you. When they finish with you now, where do you run back to? Family. And you have told the boy, you are all that matters. <laughs> you are all. I'll put you in front. Where are you there now? <laughs> where are you there? You know when people fall in love, their brain enters their shoe. The only thing they know is what? Motion. They're just going. That's the only thing. The brain is not functioning again. <laughs> now when you see young people just fall in love, we laugh at them because we've been there. We fell, we rose. <laughs> then we stood. <laughs> Are we blessed? Listen, when you find people who genuinely love you and are interested in, their, in the betterment of your life, pay any price to keep them for their few. You build in strategic relationships. How do you build and maintain strategic relationships? How do you build? Are we ready to learn? 
there's an intelligence that has to do with managing relationship now please as i go through this 10 point pay attention i am giving you what you need to survive that's why i showed even about about jesus the bible said in luke 252 that he grew in wisdom and in stature and he had favor with people he had favor with people the degree to which you will succeed determines the kind of people that like you <laughs> Are we following? Play with this divine principle at your own peril. Play with it and see what becomes of your life. Strategic relationships. Number one. Learn to recognize greatness at infancy. Matthew 2 11. Learn to recognize greatness at infancy. The Bible says that when they go to the house, they saw a child. They didn't consider that he was a child, yet they gave him this quality of gifts. That's why the Bible calls them wise men. Wisdom. My great servant of God, Dr. Mike Bodock, said is the ability to recognize difference. It's the ability to see greatness at infancy. It's wisdom to see this man. His visions are, this one will go far. If you marry a man for television and leave a man of vision, you will use that television to watch the man of visions very soon. Are we following? If you marry a man because of Benz and leave a man who you think is trekking now, very soon the one he will be riding, Benz will not be in, the, in stock then. It will be old cars. That's what they will call it then. Be careful of the way you read life. Some of our problem is short-sightedness. Listen, it is useless to know people when they are already great. Sometimes. Because their input and their development or whatever they will give contribution to your life will be based on what you were to them when they were nothing. Anybody can show love or something. Everyone likes to identify with greatness. But when you are there in your pain, in your trying and crying moments, who were there for you? learn to recognize greatness be there for people in their trying moment in their painful moment be there for them be there when they are rising because you don't know their end that's the problem you see people look for pictures and the other one bah, they are there but the one coming up you don't know how big it will be the one that is big you have seen its end you don't know how it will be Number two. Some of you have roommates like that. Cosmates like that. You abuse them today. You are following everybody on TV. Very soon, you'll be shocked that the attention you want to look for from them might not be given to you again. Avoid short-sightedness of life. Some of you are going with, you are in a relationship with people you are despising now because they can't give you 1K, 2K. But they have the, pow the power of a vision that can take any man far but you can't see tomorrow so you are a slave to your moment and captive of the now are we together captive of the now number two communicate honor learn to acknowledge people and be grateful to them for their contributions to your life give them special treatment and attention Avoid the spirit of familiarity when it has to be with those that have invested and contributed into your life. Keep pride. Esteem them very highly. That's Thessalonians 5.12 And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and over you in the Lord and admonish you. And to esteem them very what? Highly. Not highly. He says, man, what's you? Why are you honoring them like that? No, people who contribute to your life deserve it. The Bible says that's how you treat them. This is how you build greatness around your life. And to esteem them very highly. Highly. People do things for you, you make it look like nothing. Are we following? And then you expect them to carve a space in their heart and place you there. You are not ready for greatness. Are we together? Honor men, honor people. Show gratitude to people for what they do for you. 
no matter how little it is your uncle will send you money you just send him a message i'm grateful that's all thank you next time you call again now you are wondering why his number is not going through he has blocked you you are on do not disturb i'm telling you prophetically are we together no man is anti-honor no man resists appreciation every form of honor even wicked people likes honor look at the great Ammon in scripture in Esther what was his problem with Micaiah he doesn't bow down to greet him even wicked people are attracted to honor you want to build strategic relationships as you go out to the world honor people genuinely let people call you a fool never forget Matthew 5 the Bible says that the meek shall inherit death there are certain people including members of this church I can never recommend you can discern which one you are I can never risk my reputation because I know you are I know you I know you one time a friend of mine told me and there's this job opening send me social names social profession I was just thinking I was in the house I was asking my wife who do I send now and I just saw your name on my head I said okay that's all God has done it for you there are people I cannot recommend learn to appreciate people learn to honor people show them gratitude are we following show them what gratitude and never forget when it comes to honor you don't honor people the same way you honor all men but differently 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 do things with see learn it please you come to my seat you want you just am i a robber you just squeeze money like this i want to give you seat is something wrong Packaging enhances value. Even your 1K well package can look like 1 million. What's wrong with you? I'm teaching you how to have sense. Where some of you are locking doors for yourself that you don't know how. I'm telling you, you are locking doors. Oh, you think I'll come and teach you prayer and fasting? I taught you last week. We'll start with that. That's part one. I'm giving you what you need to survive what they won't tell you this is the secret of the great strategic relationship that's the new source of income are we together package it well package it because it your packaging reveals your your your, your sense of value some of you do the same to god very dirty murtala muhammad you just fold his head like this Hey, Baba, hey, baby, you make come with all your heart. Now, it's in when you give us, Baba. Just try that. And you are wondering why your life is so full of dishonor. See the way you treat God, and that's how you treat people. When it comes to honor, you do it jealously. You do the Bible says, give what attention. Don't play around it. Concentrate. Let see. Let your mind know that what I want to do is what honor. You need to see where I send people message. I'm so grateful. This means the word to me. Without this, I wouldn't have been able to get to this. You will have sent book SMS. Stupid, stupid messages. Are we following? Stupid messages. One time a lady just, I saw the way she composed messages. <laughs> My daughter sent me a birthday message. I called you, right? I said, I refuse to delete it. I kept it on my phone to keep reading it all the time. I like it when you take your time. Christmas is coming now. Send me a happy Xmas. Papa correct Send. because when you see people that's what I'm teaching you now on how you are closing doors and removing yourself from the rankings of people's hearts change your ways 
change your behavior. Number three, communicate value. I won't talk much on this. Communicate value. What is value? This is your capacity to provide needed solutions and answer. What did I say? Needed. You can't answer a question nobody's asking. Your capacity to provide needed solutions and answer. Don't say I'm the one doing it. I will do it well. Like you won't pay yourself. I've told you. Is that also? You won't recommend yourself. What you are doing in your light is for others to see. The concentration is others, not you. Especially those who are skillful. That's what kills them. Say, this is how I like it to be. Ah. I take concern you. Are we following? I take concern you. I, I like I like my peanuts to be like this. Because you thought it's you, to your taste. It has to be what is needed. It has to be the question people are asking. Answering. Are we together? Communicate value. Be competent and excellent in what you do. When people perceive that your presence in their life does not contribute anything, they'll put you in an unneeded part of their heart. That's how you build strategic relationship. Are we following? Be valuable. If I become the value. Are we together? Are we following? Listen. How do you are valuable until when your audience are kings? That's what the Bible tells us. You will stand before kings and not what? I've told you if everybody around you are unknown, you are not here yet. Keep increasing in value. Communicate a sense of value. Be valuable. Be a contributor in people's life. Let your presence have quality. Value. Increase into their life develop yourself for success is who you are becoming and not what you are pursuing it is what you attract by who you are becoming everyone likes to associate with the great there's a way you become so excellent and valuable the great who want to get involved in your life to have a stake there you won't beg to see them success meets at a level are we together number four love people genuinely Love people genuinely. That's how you build st- and maintain strategic relationships. Love people genuinely. Under that number one. Avoid greed. Don't play smart on people who help you. Greed will close international doors for you. I connect you to someone, then you went with, behind my back to go do deals with that person. You think people are stupid? You think people are fools? Are we following? Smart. <laughs> Some of you, even inside the church, they will send you to go and buy something. You will inflate the price. Some change will remain. You keep it. It's greed. And you are surprised why you are where you are. Don't play smart on people. That's one of the things people hate. Is that not so? To make them look like a fool. They'll keep you quiet. And let me tell you the good thing about great people. Ask those that stay close to me. A good can keep you quiet for the next 50 years. Some of my children know me very well. You will do something, I won't say a word. Then one day, some of them, they have experienced it after sometimes four years. I say, see, you remember you did something four years ago and I kept you quiet. They will shout Jesus. <laughs> Because they are thinking of the other ones they've done that I never said. I'll keep you quiet. That's how great people are. They'll keep you quiet. And allow you to feel yourself. Are we together? Please fight great. Don't, don't, don't play smart on people. Alright? Your actions today will fight you greatly. Two, don't use and dump people. Don't use and dump people. No man is a fool. One day they will find out. 2 Timothy 4.14 Paul said, Alexander the copper smith did me much evil. You take an advantage of people, get what you want from them, then you dump them. Life has a way of rewarding people. Life is a seed, so it will. It will come back. Full measure, press down, shaking together. It will come back.
and don't love people for what you can get for them or what you can sacrifice for them number three under that don't start to gossip or backbite people you will greatness will run away you can't build relationship like that don't try to gossip or what backbite people when you talk people down so you can close door for them you only close those doors for yourself are we together? You can never attain the height of any man you try to pull down. And let me tell you the simple truth about it. Should I share, tell you the truth? You can never pull a genuine man down. You can't pull a great man. Understand that this thing is divine. Are we together? Number five, love your helpers genuinely. Ignore your flaws and weaknesses. Pray for them. See the God part of them. Magnify the God part of them. There is no man without a flaw in his or her life. And listen and listen carefully. The reason why you will see the flaw is because they give you access. Every man is a saint on TV. Is that not so? That's what my children, the first time I had one like that, the first time they saw me was in a meeting and they saw oil coming out of people's hands. Go over us everywhere. They say, ah! We've seen God among men. <laughs> when they come close and sometimes say, I'm not feeling fine. So I'm feeling a bit weak. Then the honor begins to go down. Ah, he mad they fall sick. <laughs> Are we together? So don't take an advantage of their weaknesses. All right? Concentrate on the God part of the number five. Invest consciously to maintain relationship. Relationship is an investment. Don't expect returns if you don't invest. A little thank you. Appreciation call. Thank you message. Please and trees when visiting. Don't visit great people empty-handed. No matter what you want to give them, and no matter how little it is, don't say they don't need it. Give them. What matters is your heart and the gesture, not the quantity or the amount of what you are giving. Do we understand that? Thank you. Appreciate people. Go in the extra mile. Go in the extra mile. You can go that extra mile. Are we following? People, how much you love them, what? Genuinely. So you must be willing to spend money to maintain your cause. Don't, don't flash help us. No flash. You want me to help you? You are flashing me. You are sending me, please call me back. Stu- are we having sense? I'm teaching you some stupid things people do. Are we following? So you will open doors. See, if you can know what I'm saying this morning and start building it now, you won't suffer. I'm telling you, you have arranged your future, your 50 years ahead of time. Some of us knew it late, though God still helped us. But you are privileged to know it now. How to carve space in the hearts of men. Carve space. You go the extra mile for people that they will look at it and say, wow. Wow. See, not everything is money. Oh. You can carve that space. So you see the way you are giving people wala, wala, wala. You are carving in their heart. When you call them, the word of your call is useless. That's the truth. That's my children. There are people who come... I say leave it. They are so, I say no, no. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. I can't leave that. I tell they know it. Give me, I can't jo- pick it and becoming like that. That's how it works. Are we getting blessed already? So don't flash them and don't begin to burden people on your first contact. You just meet somebody today. You ask the person, "Sir, I need your help." They will run. They will, don't don't chase people away from your life. Are we following? How can the first time you meet me, you asking me for money? Say, I've been suffering. I don't know if you can help me. And you never start a small money. Say, five million. You be thief. Even if I get, I'll give you. Are we together? Don't burden people. This is how you chase helpers away from your life without knowing. Are we together? Number six, have relationships in different spheres and different categories of people. Have relationships in different spheres and different categories of people. Listen, you need people in every sphere. I'll say the way one of my father and the Lord said it, Apostle John Sleeman. He said, if in all your family, everybody you have are quiet people, that family don't have children. In, all, in a family, no one person decrease. They don't have fa- <laughs> They don't have children, no. They should not be happy that they have children because they are finished. That's the truth. You need it. You think I should be happy now? Everybody in this church now. They should be operating on the spirit of gentleness. I'm done. So if people want to come and beat me, they'll stay 
Eh, in one corner, we say, Maria, 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 Maria. <laughs> then they beat me, finish. <laughs> All people that we drop shoot and say, we die here. You need them all. Have different categories of people. Friends in police. Friend, build these things intentional. That's I'm also teaching you how to maintain the space. When God gives you the opportunity. How to maintain those people. How to be, make them indebted to you. People in every sphere. Every system. Try your best. You, <laughs> this is not every time you need to be. Some is phone calls. Oh, that can do certain things for you. You need people everywhere. Strategic relationships. Are we getting blessed? Number seven, understand the power of one man at a time. One man. Sometimes it's not in the quantity of people, but in their quality. Just with the Samaria woman, Jesus got a complete city. And number eight, the gift of utterance and seasoned conversation. Learn how to talk. Have a sweet spirit. Let people like to be around you. You can't be frowning all the time and say that's your calling. Say that's how we are in our family. Then change it. Are we following? Stop celebrating what people are not looking for. That you are in your family. Change it. Have a sweet spirit. Talk nice. Talk with gentility. Talk with kindness in your voice to people. And number nine, master forgiveness and forbearance. There are people who are headache, but they have their own role to play in your life. Is that not so? Ephesians 4 and verse 2. They are headache. Serious. They have their issues. But they have the role to play in their life. Oh, that's the truth. What you do is to forbear and stay with the advantage in their life. So please look for good relationships, visionary people, people of excellence, divine connectors, people that don't have the way to help you, but they have the access. They know people that will help you, but they can't help you. Destiny helpers, body bearers, people of influence on the way from relationship. Who demeans your integrity and belief system? So I say, if I help you, sleep with me. Do this for me, you sleep with me. You don't need those relationships. Get out from it. Are we following? We have to put this caution because as we say, build strategic relationship does not mean we don't give you a guide. And he said, I will build it by all means, whether hook or crook. No. Are we following? If you follow the steps we said, you'll be a bad person of value. You attract those kind of relationships. Because the Bible says you stand before kings and not mere men don't get out of this world and suffer unnecessarily that's the way the world works now and the church must have sense to connect to this are we following yes you will go out with a certificate and be jumping everywhere they are first class students without job suffering and struggling everywhere the systems have changed you will not suffer you will not struggle in life I've put in your hands what you need to survive all you should do now is to build relationship. Call your friends, keep in touch with them. Take this to heart. Build relationship. Connect to people. Show them how much you value them. Have that special space in their heart. Raise your voice and pray. Strategic men around my life. Plant men around my life. Yes, you're longer. Yes, you're a longer. Yes, you're a longer. Yes, you're a longer. Pray, pray that prayer. Not send me men. One man can lift you out of that pain. That years and decades of prayer points. When I was down, you lifted me up.